So far we have only considered strategies which are picked by the individuals themselves. So we have talked about pure strategies, we have talked about mixed strategies, but those pure or mixed strategies were picked by the players themselves. Uh, and we have uh, uh, seen several kinds of uh, equilibrium concepts uh, involving those pure and mixed strategies. Now in this module, we are going to discuss a slightly different uh, strategy, which is not picked by one individual agent, rather it is collectively uh, uh, decided, but via a device which we are going to call a mediating device. So what does it mean? So uh, let's uh, remember one of our examples, the, the playing the cricket, uh, going to watch a cricket or a football game, uh, which was happening between two friends and they, are, they were deciding independently. So far in our discussion, we have assumed that uh, uh, those uh, decisions were made independently and uh, therefore we can find out something like pure strategy Nash equilibrium and mixed strategy Nash equilibrium uh, in those kind of games. Now, if you uh, look back and think about that, does it really the way friends decide uh, uh, what to watch? So sometimes they, uh, I mean, uh, they might decide together uh, that uh, they will go to watch a football match to today and uh, a cricket match tomorrow, but uh, they do not take independent decisions and end up in a situation where one is going for uh, uh, watching cricket and one in, uh, the other one is going to watch football. So uh, in some sense, uh, they can they can uh, kind of coordinate, and if they are not able to decide which uh, 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 which game they should watch, they can just uh, toss a coin and decide based on that uh, outcome of that coin uh, which uh, decision to take, which uh, uh, match to watch. So this uh, actually helps us in uh, giving some sort of an alternative explanation of player rationality. So in, uh, th there are certain kind of situations like this one where it is uh, not meaningful to uh, ask players to take uh, decisions independently, rather they can collectively decide even, uh, even if it is via a mediating uh, device or that randomization device which is uh, the coin in this case. So these are, this is the uh, motivation or this is the intuition uh, through which we are actually going uh, to define the correlated strategy and uh, its uh, equilibrium. So the first reason is this uh, alternative explanation of rationality. Um, we will also see that utility of these uh, players uh, can get better if they are choosing such kind of a uh, decision where they are coordinating with each other and uh, giving the task to a randomization device. And finally, we'll see that there is some uh, advantage on computational tractability as well. So we have seen that uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, even though it exists, it is guaranteed to exist for finite games uh, via Nash's theorem, but it is uh, computationally very expensive to find and there does not exist any easy method of computing mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. While we'll see that correlated equilibrium is uh, relatively easier to compute. So on both uh, these uh, aspects, uh, I think this is uh, uh, the uh, right time to start discussing about correlated strategy and, it, uh, and equilibrium. So one of the classic examples for uh, discussing correlated uh, strategy is the following. So suppose there are two cars, uh, we are going to denote that as uh, player one and player two respectively. Uh, they are uh, at the crossroad, uh, a busy crossroad and they are deciding whether to wait uh, for the other card to pass or uh, continue moving. So there are two strategies for each of these players, wait and go. And this matrix is essentially showing that what is the utility for each of this. If both of them are waiting, then they are just wasting time and uh, nobody is moving. So they get some utility, which is let's say represented by zero. Now, uh, if one player, so let's say player one is going and the other player is waiting, uh, then the, the player who is actually uh, moving, uh, it gets a little higher payoff while the other player is also getting some positive payoff because uh, it knows that once the other, uh, other player has moved, other car, car has moved, uh, it will be uh, that car's turn to, to move. So similarly, the, the opposite thing happens when the other car is going and uh, this car is waiting. But if both of them go, you know what is going to happen, they will collide into each other and that will give them a very large negative payoff, which they really want to avoid. Now, um, 
you can you can uh, calculate so this could be a very um, uh, good example good uh, exercise to calculate what is the uh, Nash, Nash equilibrium uh, so from inspection you can find out that uh, both go weight and weight go are pure strategy Nash equilibrium that is uh, almost uh, uh, immediately observable but you can use the uh, the previous method to find out what is the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and you will see that there exists a uh, non-degenerate mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in this case which interestingly gives some positive probability on this uh, outcome go comma go so even though it is small but there is a positive probability that uh, will go and collide into each other and um, that is clearly not uh, not very predictable outcome of uh, of this game so have you ever seen any in any of the crossroads cars uh, ramming into each other that doesn't happen right so uh, we can we cannot explain this kind of a situation using uh, using mixed strategy nash equilibrium rather what we will do um, there is a device in practice uh, which is a traffic light or a traffic police uh, that guides the players and players essentially agree to this plan so the police or the traffic light might ask one uh, one of these cars in one direction to go and the crossroads to wait and then uh, maybe in the next round it, it is allowing the crossroads cars to move and uh, this uh, uh, this roads uh, car to wait now this uh, third party uh, which is the traffic light in this case is called it is a trusted third party so we are assuming in this uh, setup of uh, correlated equilibrium uh, correlated strategies that there exists a trusted third party like the traffic police or the traffic light and we are going to call that as a mediator it is like uh, it's not uh, that the players are coordinating uh, with each other directly but they are coordinating using a mediator so the role of the mediator is to randomize over the strategy profiles so and this is the uh, important difference that uh, earlier what was happening we were asking each of these players to randomize over their individual strategies but this mediator is not only randomizing over strategies rather it is randomizing over the whole strategy profile so maybe it is uh, randomly picking one strategy profile and whichever is the outcome it suggests those individual uh, strategies to those players so and we'll show that in the uh, when the strategies are enforceable then it becomes an equilibrium which we are going to call the correlated equilibrium so let's make uh, this uh, definition of uh, correlated strategy a little more formal so what uh, uh, what is a correlated strategy it is essentially a mapping from the set of strategy spaces so uh, strategy profiles so s as you as you can remember s is nothing but the cartesian product of s1 cross s2 uh, up to sn there are n players and uh, uh, it is uh, assigning the uh, the mapping pi or the function pi is assigning uh, probability masses on the entire strategy profile and uh, uh, therefore it is it is always going to be between 0 and 1 and uh, the sum over all the strategy profiles of pi will be equal to 1. So let's look at one uh, very simple example. Uh, go back to our uh, wait and go game. So what uh, we can say is that let's say the, uh, the probability on uh, wait, wait and go, go is 0. And wait, go and go, wait, it is half. So that means half the time you are asking one of these uh, streets to move. Uh, one of these uh, cars in this uh, straight to move and the half the other other half of the time you are asking this uh, the cars in this straight to move and that is uh, that is a correlated strategy a valid correlated strategy now what is a correlated equilibrium so when it is an equilibrium it has to be self enforceable in some sense uh, so therefore the correlated strategy a correlated strategy defined uh, in this way uh, notice that this is a strategy not of any individual player rather it is the strategy of the randomization device or the mediator whatever you want to call it so that strategy is a correlated equilibrium when no player gains from deviating uh, while others are following that su suggested strategy and uh, we are also going to assume that this uh, correlated strategy once it has been picked it's a common knowledge so something like you know the the traffic light is going to be uh, half the time on on this direction and half the time uh, on on the other direction so um, what is a correlated equilibrium therefore 
So correlated equilibrium, and let me just spend a little bit more time on, on this. Um, unlike the, uh, the, uh, the uh, probability, the mixed strategies, uh, we are not uh, uh, looking at individual probabilities anymore. Rather, we are looking at this correlated uh, strategy uh, or the, the probability distribution, which is defined over the strategy profile. So suppose uh, you, are, you are player I and you have been suggested this strategy SI. Now you are uh, contemplating whether you should follow this strategy or you should do something else. But remember that no matter whatever strategy you pick, you cannot change the outcome of the uh, uh, of that randomization device. So because it's a trusted third party, when it has given you SI, that means the randomization device uh, gave some outcome where uh, the ith component was SI. So therefore, you are, uh, that uh, device has actually suggested you to uh, uh, follow the strategy SI. So that is the reason on both on the left hand side and on the right hand side, this probability mass that you are going to multiply with is SI. And this is one of the most frequently asked questions in correlated equilibrium. Why uh, on the right hand side it is also SI, it is, it is not SI prime. Because you are, you are not controlling uh, that uh, SI uh, in any way. Um, whether you pick SI prime or something else does not change the outcome of the randomization device. And that is why on the right hand side also you will be expecting with respect to the same SI, S minus I. And uh, the rest of the thing is very easy. So on the left hand side, when you are following that strategy, so the only thing that you can change is by choosing your SI and you can get that uh, specific utility and you are looking at the expected utility because you know uh, what has been suggested to you, that is, you know SI, uh, but you do not know what, are, what has been suggested to the other uh, players. So all that you can do because pi is known to you, you can take an expected utility. You do that expected utility when you are following the strategy SI and you also calculate the expected utility when you are not following and playing something else, let's say SI prime. And then uh, this uh, correlated equilibrium is saying that you will never be better off by uh, not following that SI which has been suggested to you. And this inequality should hold for all SI, SI prime and for all players I in N. And if that happens, then we are going to call that pi uh, a correlated equilibrium. So let me make one small remark that uh, this mediator suggests these actions after running its randomization device pi. Uh, so this is no, no subscript here, just pi because there is no uh, uh, component wise thing here. Every agent's best response is to follow it uh, if uh, others are also following it. So the, the whole intuition of this uh, correlated equilibrium can be summarized into this sentence. So let us come back and look at some of our very favorite examples. So this football and cricket game we have seen several times in the past and uh, if you have done that uh, exercise uh, carefully then you can find out that the uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium uh, looked something like this. So player 1 was picking F with 2 third and uh, C with 1 third and uh, player 2 was picking this F with 1 third and C with 2 third. That was a mixed strategy, the uh, 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 the non-degenerate mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Of course, there were two pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Now, let me uh, try to ask the question that uh, if we look at this particular thing, so pi, so now we are talking about correlated strategy, so we will be putting probability masses directly on the strategy profile. So on this profile C comma C and F comma F, I am putting half and half. So therefore, this F, 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 on this we are putting probability half and this c comma c on this outcome we are putting probability half is that a correlated equilibrium so what do we need to uh, do to check whether this is a correlated equilibrium or not we'll have to see whether this uh, inequality uh, of this definition uh, holds or not so uh, what is what is it? So I'm just uh, giving you the way how you should do it. But uh, I mean, I, I'll not do uh, everything. So let's say we are looking at player one. So and S1 that has been suggested to it is F. And then the only thing that we need to check is S1 prime when it is C. Right. So this is from the point of view of player one. So now we can write down. So this the same expression that we have here. Uh, on, on in the definition we can we can write it down uh, in this case 
and uh, uh, we see that the probability so the first thing is the probability of f comma f and we are going to multiply the utility of player one when it is following that f and uh, the other player is also playing f and then so i am just writing down the left hand side so uh, then the other thing will be pi of f comma c and utility when uh, the, uh, the the that player so it is still playing f and the other player is playing c now we know that uh, u1 of fc is zero so this part is zero uh, and uh, uh, also this part uh, this probability is also zero under under this uh, uh, correlated strategy and then you have this this number which is half and this number u1 uh, f comma f which is two here so together this becomes equal to one now if you uh, change so if you are playing s prime s1 prime as c what changes is this uh, quantity becomes c so this part does not change this part also does not change all that changes is these two num uh, things become uh, this becomes also c here and also this becomes c now we know that you want c comma f is zero and here uh, pi of f comma c f c is zero so uh, on the right hand side you will have uh, something like zero which is strictly less than the utility when it is following that uh, suggestion which has been given by the uh, by the mediator similarly you can do it for c so when the suggestion was c for player one whether it is um, beneficial for uh, for that player to follow that or not and also do this for player two and you can see that in all these cases this inequality is getting satisfied the inequality uh, that we have said in this definition of correlated equilibrium and therefore this uh, uh, half and half uh, so putting half probability here and half probability here is indeed a correlated equilibrium uh, what you can also observe uh, let us now uh, uh, compare the the strat the utility the expected utility here so let me just erase this part a little bit so the expected utility here uh, in under msne you can see that that is going to be two thirds for both the players while for correlated equilibrium uh, all that you need to do is to find out the corresponding strategy uh, the so with probability half uh, you are getting so when you are in the correlated equilibrium for player one you are getting with probability half you are getting two and with probability half you are getting one so which gives you this uh, this uh, expected utility which is uh, larger than the mixed strategy nash equilibrium so certainly if you are following a correlated strategy you can do better uh, in an expected way so similarly you can uh, take a look at the uh, the wait and go game uh, in the traffic lights um, so and i have given a, a different correlated strategy which is putting uh, probability of one third under uh, uh, over this three uh, strategy profiles wait 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 uh, wait go and go wait and uh, the question is whether this is a correlated equilibrium follow the same strategy as before um, you can you can check whether there are other uh, correlated equilibrium the one that i have just suggested a while ago and which is very commonly used in the um, in the traffic lights that is uh, you put half so the, the example that we have given so this example uh, put half and half on wait go and go wait uh, and uh, zero for the other two cases whether that is a correlated equilibrium or not